We chose the theme free space because it had two components made into one. That space for us is more important really than the object of architecture. That space is the, is the thing that contains us. We are contained by walls, by surfaces, by enclosures. So it was really the, the impact of surfaces that space is. We live our lives in the void, in the space between. So we wanted that to be important in this Biennale and we used the word free in terms of, uh, in our manifesto, we wanted it to describe uh, a, a generous spirit, a, a generous gift uh, to strangers, that in our profession, we are a, a commissioned profession. People come to us with their money, with their dreams, with their anticipations, and we act as translators from need into space. So we wanted to use free space, both within our profession and also for the general public, so that they could have a word which is a, a t to look for that ingredient in each project, in an old project or in a new project. It might be a planning permission close to where you live and you could use the Free Space Manifesto as a way of gauging what generous spirit is in this project, what uh, aspects of nature's free gifts, which are light and, and the full moon, uh, the setting sun, beautiful uh, fresh air, bird song, those pieces. And also we wanted to celebrate materials, that there are beautiful materials that the earth gives us, of marble and timber, that, that architecture ranges from the most minute surface that you touch to the most uh, complex uh, projects that architects bring to civilization. It's not just building architecture, has a, a, a component of civilization within it. So we are here in Venice celebrating that component of civilization, from the most simple project to the most complex project. A poet colleague of ours said to us <clears throat> some time ago, you work with light, don't you? That is your material. And we thought that was a really beautiful way of a poet trying to understand architecture, well he did understand architecture, but he was working with words and he felt, well in the end, the architect is working with light. And we found that simple statement really refreshing because we do work with light. And we started to think about the basic elements of architecture before you think of need or, or money or, or uh, programs. And there's something very interesting and profound about that, that perhaps our interior worlds, which we need to continually enrich, sometimes need that, that kind of uh, purity of space to, in order which to replenish our, our spirits. So the Biennale really is, is a kind of time to reflect and a time for us to think about the, the, the wonderful capacity that architecture has and how how um, privileged we feel to be a part of this, of this discipline, this kind of force of energy, let's say. Free space is a kind of a conceptual uh, idea, but it's also very physical. We had the great pleasure to win a competition in Milan, not far from here. It was a great honor for us to win this competition and to build in Italy, the kind of cradle of architecture from our point of view. And in, in the building that we built there, for Bocconi, there is a, say, a, an example of free space, let's say. They needed uh, offices for a thousand professors, they needed a new aula mania for a thousand people, and they needed five large seminar rooms. And our idea was to, uh, to hold the thousand offices like courtyards hanging from the sky and to carve into the earth with the aula mania and the other uh, seminar rooms and to hold the space between and structure holds the thousand offices above. The aula projects 22 meters beyond itself and the space between these two worlds allows the city to flow in. And the lower level is, is lined with beautiful Bianca Laza. So it's like the interior of an oyster. And the other, the offices above are courtyards like a, an, an abacus. So between these two worlds is a free space where the city flows through, where the students and the uh, university link to the city, and we frame the city. So the free space of the, uh, if you like, the additional thing that we as architects invented for the client is not the, the thing they needed, 
but what we found as an invention. <coughs> it's nothing. It's actually the nothing between is the free space. The structure is every 25 meters, 3.6 diaphragm walls, 25 meters, 3.6 diaphragm walls. Very, very robust structure. But when the light comes, the light dissolves structure. So light can obliterate these powerful things. And under the 22 meter cantilever, in the void with the, the Bianca Laza, you have a primitive sense of gravity. So gravity and light are free natural gifts to us that we work with. We are not professional curators, we're architects. And we were a bit worried in the beginning about how we would curate this um, huge exhibition. And then we remembered what President Barata said to us, which is to just be yourselves. And we asked to see these buildings empty. And we've been to many biennales. And when we saw the corduroy empty, we were just completely enthralled. And it was, uh, it was so wonderful to see in Venice, which is a kind of a labyrinth of little streets, to somehow see this like a bridge of space. It reminded us of the, the wonderful bridge that you build the, for the Redentore where you, with gondolas where you cross the lagoon. It was that scale. It's a big space in a city which doesn't have that kind of space. And we were also trying to think about how we could make a connection between Venice and the exhibition so that you somehow had a feeling more that you were in Venice, that you're not just at an exhibition. So we stripped it all back. Uh, we, we also felt it was important that, that, uh, that the exhibition wasn't frozen, that it would be different in the daytime and the nighttime. And it's risky, maybe, opening up all the windows and letting the light in, because then the participants can't control the, the, the way that the exhibit looks, because it changes. But when we were in Venice, we were wandering in and out of different churches, and we just loved the fact that in the early morning, the sunlight would be here, and you'd go in the evening, and you would just see the side chapels or something. And we thought that change was beautiful, that the atmosphere in the evening or in the wintertime would be different to summertime because that's what architecture is. It's, it's not a frozen experience. It changes in the rain and the sun, in the winter, in the summer, so that the exhibits should be robust enough to, to respond to that. And in the central pavilion, we knew that the central pavilion was roof lit. And when we, after the last Art Biennale, many of the uh, roof lights had been opened up, which was wonderful, and we continue to open up to let more light in so that the the, the, the corduroy is, is, is mysterious and kind of um, shadowy and uh, the central pavilion is like a vessel of light. It just takes light from the sky. And because we scratched at the structure, we found that incredibly beautiful window by Carlo Scarpa that was hidden. Sometimes we don't see the most obvious because we have a, an idea of the black box or we have to show things. We, we didn't an architectural exhibition is completely different, we believe, to an art exhibition because architecture is a different phenomenon. It's a different, everyday, necessary art form. And we also found that by opening up existing openings in the walls that we could make uh, visual axes connecting, uh, connecting projects so that you can, you can see at one moment yesterday I was looking past Leverance the Leverance exhibit and seeing behind Manhattan. And that, that's also really interesting because we, we, what we started to think in the central pavilion that it should be about the past and the future because you move in a kind of spiral and the time in architecture is not linear. It, it is a more of a, a spiraling thing and the past and the future are the same as an architect. So in the central pavilion, we have the work of architects who are no longer living side by side with um, uh, architects who were confronting very contemporary uh, problems which bring us into the future. And in the uh, Corderia, we have a kind of rhythm of, of practice of, of contemporary architects dealing with materiality, dealing with imagination, dealing with generosity, dealing with their local cultures. When you're in the corduroy and you're standing in the middle of the, the central space, it looks empty. 
And then when you move into what we call the side chapel, it's full because you're looking across at things. So we, we just really want people to enjoy those buildings and to enjoy the artifacts uh, within the, the, the strength of each of those buildings. So we wanted people to, when they enter both the uh, Cordery or the out to the Gendre, that you stand under and sit under this structure with the water coming in and you say, how beautiful this, even though it was made for something else hundreds of years ago, you can sit on marble with your back against brick and watch the sun set over two bodies of water. It's just fantastic. I mean, Venice is beautiful. So we want people to enjoy Venice, to enjoy the work of participants. And people have worked, our team has worked incredibly hard. It's been a pleasure to work with the Venice Biennale team because you have such experience. Each year you produce for the world stage fantastic things to change our thinking. I think we are finding it uh, inspirational to watch the energy and reactions of uh, unknown architects and well-known architects to participate in this fantastic gathering of architects from around the world.